<laughs> hey, welcome, welcome to the show, my ambitious ones. It is me, it is me, your girl, Labora Lee, and you have now tuned in to Ambitiously, the podcast. Mm-hmm. You absolutely have. I'm sorry, I had to get some water in my in, in my in my system real quick. I'm all on the water kick these days. You can't get enough of it. First things first, the phone line is open. Call in 443-850-4828. Again, the number is 443-850-4828. Um, or you can drop a comment and I will show it on the screen. Or you could ask me to drop the link and I will. Um, and then you can come on come on camera with me and talk about some of the things that we're talking about this evening. Um, also... <clears throat> Remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. You know, every like, every subscription, every share is duly noted. And I appreciate the people that do like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to whomever's watching right now. Um, and I will be saying that again when I show my love to my peoples. But for right now, we got some things to get into. But before I get into those things, because it's, boo, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. But the first thing you need to know is this. It is Media Monday. It is Media Monday, and we are on the Gab Beat. Today is the day that we come and we bring you all of the trending topics. We do, we do. Um, It's very necessary for us to keep up to date about, you know, what's, what's going on right now and the world, the craziness, the chaos and all of that good stuff. But before we get into that, check this out. What they're offering might just have you in the mood to get naked. Flex offers $100 off a six pack of wine for $39.99, including shipping. Again, the offer is $100 off of a six pack of wine for $39.99 with shipping included. These are not small bottles of wine. These are your normal size bottles of wine and you're guaranteed to fill your wine cellar or have a really good time. <laughs> Get it now, y'all. Get it. All right. I had to make sure I had some affairs in order before I really got started Um, because I hate when it's time and I start searching and looking for stuff and I like to just have it already available to me. So when it's time, then I can get to the nitty gritty. Found the stuff I needed. So now let's get into the gab beat because there's a lot going on right now. Oh my goodness. So look, we're going to start with um, Aaron Hernandez's brother. His name is um, DJ Dennis Jr. Hernan- well, Dennis Hernandez Jr. Um, he was arrested last week after he allegedly threw a brick at ESPN headquarters with a note attached to it. Um, so according to the police documents, the incident happened around 3 p.m. on March the 23rd at the famed Bristol... I'm going to get into all of that in a minute, but the famed Bristol, Connecticut campus, just after cops act, um, were asked to perform a welfare check on DJ after he allegedly stated that he wanted to smash out the windows at the state capitol, oh my lord, and at ESPN. Um, the police say um, ESPN security told them that an Uber had arrived at one of their gates, but when it was turned away, the passenger in the car got out of the ride and threw something onto the grounds and then got back into the vehicle and left. All right, so oh, DJ, what? I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to express my sentiments in a minute. I just want to make sure that we get all of the, okay all of the information. So cops in, in the documents say that they um, say when they investigated the object, they discovered it was a white plastic bag with a large brick in it. Um, they also said it had a handwritten note on it. Um, and so this is what the note said. So Got to get into that. To all, to all media outlets, cops say, the message read, it's about time you all realize the the effect media has on all fam all on all family members since you're 
a worldwide leader, maybe you could lead um, how media and messages are delivered brick by brick. Clean it up. Oh, oh, um, mm, oh, um, police say that the note was signed. Truly yours, Dennis, Dennis J. Hernandez. Um, cops say when they spoke with security, the, the, uh, a security guard who witnessed the incident at the booth, the worker told them that they were 90%, um, 90% positive that the man who threw the object was DJ, a former Division One football player and, and, uh, and Aaron Hernandez's brother. Well, it's not hard to... Okay, whatever. Um, cops say they ultimately made contact with DJ and he admitted to being at e ESPN, but didn't wish to speak about the incident. DJ was arrested for a misdemeanor breach of peace, but was released on promise to appear in court next month. Um, cops say that they also advised DJ um, he is no longer allowed at the ESPN's camp campus and could be arrested um, for trespassing if he returned. Um, they say DJ stated he understood. Listen here. Um, and it was so much that was in that 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 passage that I just read that I am just sitting here trying to make sure that I I take it all in. Okay, my ambitious ones. Here's the first thing. Um, I can only one is. ESPN is in Bristol. And if you don't know about Aaron and DJ, they were, they grew up in Bristol, right? That's their home town. Um, so it wasn't like um, DJ had to travel far to get to Bristol. He was already there. That's where they're from. Um, that's one. Two. Um, I think when it comes to what he wrote on his note, um, he's still hurting. I mean, of course he still hurt. His little brother went through all of that craziness, but he went through all of that craziness. Let's not ever get it twisted, because y'all know I always like to play devil's advocate on this show. But that's, let's not ever get it twisted. He went through all of that stuff partially because of his own fault. I, it's a lot with that Aaron Hernandez story. And one day, oh, maybe I should do a deep dive on that one real quick. Um... Because there's a lot more to that story that a lot of people don't pay attention to because part of that was himself. But when it comes to the game of football, you got to think, like, they're taking mad hits, um, like, all the... Well, and especially a player in his position. And shout out to anybody who's watching on YouTube and anybody who's watching on Twitch. Um, but anyway, when it comes to um, football... And I, um, you, as you know, if you've watched this podcast in the past, then you know that I am an avid football fan. I love me some football. Now, I could be a little bitter when it's not my team on the winning end, but that's not the point. The point is, I love football. And one thing that I rec recognize with my love for football is this. Those players take a lot of hits. Um, and so I, I believe it's called CTE. They're looking into that really heavy. Um, and I think that it's, it's been alluded to that Aaron Hernandez had CTE as well. So as far as DJ is concerned, he's still hurting. Um, I don't know... I mean, it's different. And then not only did Aaron get into all that trouble and then had to go to court and all of that good stuff, um, then he he took his own life. And um, I think that DJ is still, you know, still hurting from that. So we're going to keep it moving. But DJ is going to be okay. But stay off of um, ESPN's property because they're not having it, but I don't think he'll be back. And I don't think that anything major is going to happen to him when he goes to court. It's a misdemeanor. Like, what, they're going to slap him on the wrist, maybe make him do some community service or, you know, some... I don't even see him getting probation for this bullshit, but whatever. All right, let's keep it moving. So, let's talk about Drake really quick. <laughs> this is a quick one, and then I'll go to commercial. So... Drake, um, 
let's okay, let's just say this. La La Palooza Brazil um refunding tickets. And the reason being the reason why they're refunding those tickets is because Drake, Drizzy Drake, misses show after partying with 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. Child, 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 child. So Drake missed his head, um, his headlining La La Palooza um Brazil set Sunday night. Less than 24 hours. I'm sorry, his hair in my mouth. Less than 24 hours after he was partying in Miami with 50 Cent the night before. Um, the two superstars linked up inside of a um what is it? Inside the booby trap over the river. Oh, so it's boo. Oh, I wonder what that is. I kind of get to Miami, y'all. Which would have been um, a monumental occasion had thousands of fans not been expecting him on stage down in Brazil. Don't play with my Brazilian people. L- listen, I got Brazilian listeners, and I don't like how you just play with them, Drake. Um, to cap performance, um, to cap a performance with. Oh, he was getting ready to do a, a performance with Rosalia. I do like Rosalia. Um, Tove Lu and Armin van Buren. I don't know how to say that name. I'm not, I'm sorry if I messed it up. And more. Drake was quickly replaced with. Um, Skirlex, I don't even know how to say that name, even on the bill, which, as you'd expect, didn't sit well with the fans. Um, they said that's not what they paid for. They didn't come. They didn't come there for that. They know what they came for. But the um, so the fest the festival issued uh, Mia Coppola, um, explaining Drake didn't have any any um any of the necessary tools to nail his performance and offer the three day ticket holders um the three day ticket holders the opportunity for a refund. Listen, I'm pumped that he was going to get up there with Rosalia. I like Rosalia, and she kind of embedded herself in my brain a little bit because I kept seeing her commercials on YouTube. But I do like Rosalia. Um, yeah, Drake, don't be playing with my people down in Brazil. Now they was waiting for you to come and all because you want to be partying with 50. Party with 50 later. Y'all rich. Y'all could party anytime y'all want to party. Party with him later. Nigga, show up for your obligations. I'm sorry. I just don't like when people don't show up for their obligations. I'm a very punctual person. Um, my daughter and I joke all the time. She calls me the rabbit from Atlas in Wonderland because it's like, I really am like, I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. I just don't do lateness. And I, I'm, I'm always on time. Like I'm a very punctual person. Um, I have alarm set for everything. So <laughs> when it comes to obligations, if you're supposed to be there, then freaking be there. Don't listen. Nobody got time for that, Drake. Show up. So now you got to get them, them people, give them people their money back. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you got to do it because I, I doubt that the people who do La La Palooza was, is giving them the money back because it wasn't their fault. They were where they were supposed to be. It's your fault. I mean, you got money. You'd be all right. Um, yeah. I want to get to this whole... It's so much going on, so I'm trying to make sure I move fast. Um, I'm only doing one more commercial tonight, and that's because I want to get all of this in. So, quick commercial. I'll be right back. Um... We're going to do this. Hello, Fresh. Let's go. What a time to be alive. I repeat, what a time to be alive. Did you know that you could get fresh ingredients along with beautiful recipes delivered to your door? Did you know that? Well, you can get 21 free meals plus free shipping and three free gifts when you use the code HelloFresh21. The link is in the description. Again, use the code hellofresh 21 to get 21 free meals plus free shipping plus three free gifts. I'm telling you. Time to get healthy, y'all. That's crazy. Um. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was crazy. Somebody on my Insta- on Instagram just went all the way back to 2015 and like the, a post from then. So it was crazy. Um. Anyway, so let's get to this Takashi situation. So I know by now everybody's heard that Takashi got jumped in the gym. I believe it was a 
LA Fitness or something like that in down in Florida. But the point is, he got jumped. I I, I want to say, well, in the video, if you go watch the video, you can go watch that yourself. I'm not playing that nonsense on my channel. One is because I'm not here to promote violence, but we'll just say this. Um, in the video, I'll describe it a little bit. It's like three dudes. They look like big dudes, too. They, like, kicking and stomping them and punching them and stuff like that and calling him a bitch ass. You know, the rest. But, and talking about how they want to be famous now for kicking his ass. They were saying a whole bunch of stuff, right? That's the gist of the video, right? Um, so, a lot of people have had a lot of stuff to say, so I'm gonna have to jump in my notes because it's not all together. <laughs> but, Jim Jones is one of those people who were asked about the video. And so this is what he said. He said, one is, I'd rather dance than to talk about him, meaning Takashi. Um, Jim Jones said that um, Jim Jones is proud, is a proud gym rat. But when it comes to rats in the gym, he just doesn't have a whole lot, a whole lot to say. No, I can't. I'm in the middle of a show. Um... Hold on one second, y'all. Hold on, my sister trying to get me to go do stuff. And I can't. I do it in full any other time, but I can't, not today. Um. Anyway, so, but anyway, so, he doesn't have a whole lot to say past that point. I'm sorry, y'all. I just, my sister, I love her, though. Um, so... You know, they caught up with the with with Jim Jones um, and his new, um, you know, to, to talk about his new um, Back in My Prime album because he is releasing the album really, really soon. Um, but he immediately burst out, hold on, burst out laughing and hit a mean Millie Rock when they asked him about his thoughts about 6 9 6 9 is now infamous. Um you know, lopsided brawl inside of the LA Fitness. I knew it was LA Fitness. Um, Takashi 6 9 and Jim Jones have a pretty continuous past. Um, okay, she didn't text me back. Um, but they have like a, it's a lot of tension in that past too. But thanks to 6 9 repeatedly attempt to get him arrested after the two clash several years ago, Jim, Jim Jones finally did offer up some insight in between him hitting the wall <laughs> and suggested that Takashi, um, Takashi's choice of gem wasn't the brightest and is is certain that he would never have, um, he would, he is certain that would never happen in facilities that he worked out at. Um, yeah, I don't know why. And listen, I'm going to say something to this in a minute. But the Harlem Rapper is currently plotting his own lineup of um, Vamp Fit Gems. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. Vamp Fit Gems and um, Frequence New Jersey's Impact Zone with fellow artist Fabulous Davies and Maino. And now if you look online, like if you're on IG, it's always a video of them up there clowning or doing whatever they're doing. But um, discourages knuckleheads from attempting to pull similar stunts at his sanctuary. You've been warned. That's what he said. Stop playing with him. Um, the bottom line, <laughs> Jim Jones is bulletproof when it comes to the shenanigans and can't wait for all of his friends to be free from the belly of the beast prison. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, it got chopped up. It was a lot more, but I'm glad I didn't because that was too much Drake stuff anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's what's happening with that. Um, 6 Nines baby mama also said that he and him getting jumped in the gym was an embarrassment to his daughter. I got a lot to say about that too. And 6 9 also said that he will not be getting security even after everything that happened. He is not 
going to go get extra security or none of that stuff because he doesn't feel like he needs it. Um, he he going to tough it out. Now, one thing I'm surprised about in the situation. Well, let me get to the baby mother first. Ah. Oh. I hate to say this about a woman, especially a single mother, but here it goes. Sometimes you got to go there. Um, it's giving bitter, boo. Every time something happens with this man, now I understood the snitching part because it does make it a little awkward when it comes to your daughter's welfare, his all his family, for that matter. But him getting jumped in the gym... Your daughter should not even be knowing about that. That That's grown folks' business. It's giving very bitter, like you're very upset. Um, and I could see how, because when he started blowing up and all that stuff, he really kind of left you in the wind and got some new booze and all that stuff. And as a woman who's been in that situation multiple times over, you don't be bitter. You just get over it. You move on and you... Carry on with life, baby. I understand the hurt. Sometimes you got to go through the pain and the hurt and stuff first. But you learn how to adapt and move on. And that's the problem that I have with a lot of chicks. By the way, when I do get back to doing what I got something to do this Wednesday for my job. But when I get back to doing what Wednesdays, that's something we're going to talk about. Because I need us to do better as women. Can't walk around better all the time. Sometimes you just got to take your time. Sit in it, let it bother you for however long it needed to bother you, and then get over it. This six nine, this six nine situation has been going on for a mighty long time, baby. It's time to let it go. So your daughter should not know about him getting jumped in the gym, especially if you're saying that you don't even let her see him. How she know about that? So anyway, um, and as far as six nine, baby, I suggest one is I'm shocked that you were even in the fuck. In, mm, excuse my language, that you were even in a, um, a public facility such as LA Fitness. That shocks me. Um, especially when you be sitting around with stacks and taping money to yourself and then all the money. Why you don't have a gym at your location? Where you at? Put a gym in there and hire a personal trainer if that's what you're going to do. But you know when you're going to pop um, public, into the public, you're a marked man. And that's what I'm going to say about that. But let's get to Kanye West really quick. Um, So, Kanye says he's no longer anti-Semitic. He's no longer anti-Semite, thanks to Jonah Hill. If you don't know who Jonah Hill is, um, he just did a movie recently with Eddie Murphy, Nia Long. Um, oh, man. Eddie Murphy, Nia Long, um, Lauren London. Um, it's on, I believe it's on... I don't know is that is it on Netflix? It's either on Netflix, which I believe it is on Netflix or Prime, but I believe it's on Netflix. Um, and he's done a lot of other things. He was um get him to the Greek. Is he was in a lot of other movies as well. So anyway, Kanye West says he's done a 180 on his views about Jewish people and is no longer an anti-Semite, thanks to actor John Jonah Hill. The rapper took to Instagram Friday night to announce that he was watching um, the 2012 film 21 Jump Street, starring Hill. Jonah Hill was in that, that film as well with Channing Tatum, when he had an epiphany about Jewish the Jewish race. Ooh, Kanye, it's getting juicy. Kanye said watching Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street made him... Um, made me like Jewish people again. Whoa. Um, no, no one should take anger against one or hold on because I got it. different screens. One or two individuals and transform that into hatred towards millions of innocent people. Huh. 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 Um, he continued, no Christian can be labeled anti-Semite knowing Jesus is a Jew. Duh. Um, thank you, Jonah. I love you. That's what he said. Or oh, Jonah Hill, I love you. Kanye's statements are hard to swallow given that his recent um, professed love for Hitler. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's much Kanye. Oh my gosh. Um, that he professes recent love for Hitler. He went on a prolonged <laughs> scorched 
Earth campaign against Jews, as he alluded to issues he had with some um, executives in the music business. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to it in a minute. Uh, Give me a minute. Um, And it was all very ugly. Kanye went on um, InfoWars hosted by conspiracy nut Alex Jones and praised Hitler and the Nazis. Ye also um, hung out with white nationalists. I hate saying this dude's name every time I got to say it, but Nick Fuentes. Oh my gosh, Nick Fuentes. And two, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Computer? No. Oh, that's because I did it the wrong way. Forgive me, people. I also know what I be doing over here, and it's not good. I um, went to a, um, an event at uh, Mar a Lago. Oh, and this, I might bring them into hood history, um, that, that particular mansion for an, an, an infamous dinner with Donald Trump um, during an interview with Piers Morgan. <sighs> Dread him to Kanye doubled down on his anti-Semitic remarks, but clarified that he was only referring to the Jews he had done who had done him wrong. This was in reference to an earlier remark he had made about going DEFCON 3 on Jews again ha- um again hardcore anti anti-Semite. Um his comment his comment led to the cr- his um a crushing downfall. I don't know if it really did though. Um Kanye became a pariah of sorts in Hollywood and the music industry. Well, if that's the case, yeah, maybe. Um, he clo- his close friends dropped him like a bad habit. Really, did they? Um, and he lost major business deals with uh, Adidas. Did he really? And Balenciaga. Now, I don't know about them because I, I got my own beef with Balenciaga, but did he really lose Adidas? Or did they lose him? I'm just saying. Um, mm honey he also had his honorary college um college degree ripped from him by the school of art institute um the school of the art institute in chicago um a watchdog group who called stop anti-sem um anti-semitism named kanye anti-semite of the year in 2022 as for whether this is really a change of heart one post does not erase a string of hate. Whew. I don't know if really, he didn't really lose Adidas because they need him back right now. They lost a lot of money. And then with this whole Beyonce thing, did he really lose Adidas or did they really lose him? Um, And I don't know about French. I mean, some friendships may have ended, but he didn't lose all of his friends and he got married. So I don't know. I... Jonah, thank you for, um, I guess, <laughs> changing his heart. Um, because here's the thing. I really do. I, I'm a firm believer in you cannot blame the whole world for what certain people do. You blame those people. I'm all about accountability. If you did it, you did it. Like, this is what it is. And just, I'm not going to blame everybody else in the world for what two people did to me. You know what I'm saying? Or what four people did to me. I'm going to blame them four people because those people don't know what's going on and how that happened and why that happened. They have no clue. So it's like, I don't know. This whole Kanye West situation is crazy to me. All right, let me see what I was doing. <laughs> All right, I don't know who rants of um, 15, um, 1500 or nothing. I don't know who he is, but he's a producer. And he said, when it comes to y'all rap producers out here, so y'all better listen to what he got to say if you watch this show. He said, today's rap producers lack musical intelligence when it comes to their samples. Oh, oh, is he, is he challenging y'all? I think he is. I think he is. Okay, so here's some clarification about this young man because I really don't know who he is, but maybe I should know. So, um, Kendrick Kendrick Lamar's Grammy Award winning um, collaborator um, rants of 1500 or nothing says rap music produced today is missing some serious must-haves for success. 
we um well so he was in LA and um while he praised sampling for being the culture's core creation process. He frowned upon new producers who don't understand the beats they're making. Um, Rance compared the language of the music to a language in general, and producers should learn the basic chords, um, chords just like one would learn their ABCs, but thinks most r- artists are playing it safe at the behest of the record labels. Um, veteran music uh, musicians um, have been in the studio with other music heavyweights. He sold this. He's been in the studio with a lot of people like Jay-Z, Bruno Mars, Snoop, and, and other people. So um, maybe, uh, and Ludacris. So his opinion is more um, educated than formulated. Um, it's not just rookie swinging for the low-hanging fruit either. Ooh, Missy Elliott pimped out two of her um, classic records this week. Um, B is That Bitch, which borrows from her 1999 hit, She's a Bitch. Um, and a new girl group, Flow, Flow's Fly Girl single, which updates Missy's 2002 smash hit, Work It, where um were both released so i get where he coming from when it comes to this it's like because you are really yeah you're using samples all right so i came up in a time where you know people all have always like as far as rap music and i am concerned and what i know about you know music of to you know rap music samples have always been used and they've been used since hip-hop has been here but the thing is you know, we're talking about they're using hip hop from like Missy and stuff like they you redid Missy uh, Missy songs or whatever. But usually, when I hear a sample, and 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 one of my theme songs is a sample, right? I don't want to hear like I want it. I want to hear like I want to hear it, but I don't want to hear it. like I don't want to be it to be directly like I know exactly where they got that song from. Like I want to be like, damn, what is this? And then when the producer or somebody spots like listen this is this now listen to this first and then listen to this and then i can kind of like yeah okay i hear it you feel me i don't want to hear it and know exactly what song it came from i want you to take that sample and i want you to turn it into something amazing i'll be like damn where the fuck did this come that's what i really want to feel about it you feel me and so i guess when it comes to what he's saying a little bit, I can kind of concur. I can kind of agree with that. Because it's like, nigga, I don't need to know. I don't, I don't want to know directly where the sample came from. <laughs> like, I don't want to know. I need you to leave some uh, element of guess. I'm guessing in there, I guess. So anyway, I, I, I guess that's what I'm saying. I want to be able to do a little guesswork a little bit. I don't need it to be so obvious. Um, Mike Will made it um, on his birthday. At ATL um, gave him a proclamation. So he got, you know, you know, you like to hear when people get the keys to the city. So that's cool. <laughs> you like know, to hear when people get the keys to the city. So um, Mike, Will made, Mike Will made it. Um, it was his 34th birthday. Um... Um, For him, it's one for the books, um, at least in Atlanta, where he's earned the city's Outstanding Citizen Award. Um, People like uh, T.I. and um, the mayor and, you know, a lot of people from the entertainment industry were there. Um, Who else was in it? So we had... uh, Okay, so we had Ray Sherman, um, DJ Greg Street, Outcast is Big Boy, Escapes Tiny. Of course, Tiny was there if T.I. was there. Um, Sony Digital, Tri- Tricky Stewart, ATL Jacob, Spence Lee, and so forth and so forth were all in attendance to this occasion. Um, and, you know, I, I, I imagine he was excited about it. Why wouldn't he be? Like, whatever. I wanted to get to this really... Okay, we'll be at a time. I gotta make sure... <laughs> 
I can't stay stuck on these stories sometimes. I'll be wanting to, but if I can't get it all in today, I will save some because I'm not doing it this Wednesday, but I will be back on Friday and then I will be doing the um, Wet and White Wednesday next Wednesday, but it's not going to be what you think. Uh, but let's get to this Troy Ave and Techstone situation. So, Troy Ave is kicking Techstone um, while he's down. He drops a, a You're Guilty diss song. Whoo! Chow. Chow, chow, chow. If it's not enough that he's going to court for the situation right now. Chow. But anyway, so Troy Ave is revealing in, um, the fact that he helped put his mortal en enemy text on behind bars. He just released a very disrespectful track um, celebrating his pending prison sentence. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this looks. Um, the Brooklyn MC unleashed uh, the fairy title, Dear Hater, I Want. Woo! Oh, no. Um, text on found guilty. Dropping it on Friday, just hours after a jury in NYC found the um, pioneering hip-hop podcaster was guilty um, of manslaughter. The song opens up with the audio of um, Bosco 100 slamming text on for writing a letter to the judge that spoke against Troy, which provided the fuel for the <laughs> slanderous chorus. Since you I gotta say it the way it's say it here, okay? I gotta say it that way. Since you niggas like writing <laughs> juicy Hold on. Letters. Here you go. So since you niggas like write like writing letters, here go one. Dear hater, I won. I'm a boss. You a bum. Suck it. Y'all know what he told him to suck. <laughs> Until it comes. Oh my gosh. Troy. Troy um co directed the visuals with um what is it? Shanice Rainil. And um, Wiley captured himself rapping outside of the NYC courthouse where the trial took place. He justified his decision to testify against Texone by using an image of Jay-Z in court during the 2021 perfume lawsuit, assuring his critics that he was in the right and his rival was in the wrong. Texone, mm, real name Daryl Campbell, was convicted of... Um, taking out Troy's bodyguard, Ronald McFadder, and wounding three others, including Troy, during the um, T.I.'s 2016 concert in NYC. Um, Troy used clips of the shooting in the Hater video. Oh, why would you do Listen, Troy. Troy. We gotta talk about this, bro. Um, <laughs> Talk about this, bro. You're doing a lot, bro. Troy. Uh, Troy. But he used some of the... Oh, uh, he used... I don't know if that's not... Uh, okay, give me one second, and then I'll tell you in a second. So, um, the story was broken back in 2016. Several people were caught in the Irvin Plaza melee that spawned massive chaos inside of the venue. Um, the new track is actually Troy's third diss song, against tax on oh he's just not letting up this this might not even the third one this this might um i don't we can't i don't know if it's giving vindication or obsession at this point that three and one month troy all right baby now make another make some other music and we gonna do that like leave all right the nigga is going to prison he not coming home troy let it go. That's what I'll be saying about this. Because niggas can be better too. We're going to talk about bitterness. Um, but let it go, Troy. Let it go. Yes, let it go. And then make some other music so people can really rock with you beyond this tax stone situation. Go in the studio. Go in the lab and make a song not about tax stone. Okay? That's what we need you to do right now. 
Um, and in that melee, um, I don't know. If, well, I don't know. I don't think Mano and Shorty still together, but his girlfriend got hit in that situation too. So it was a lot of stuff going down up in Urban uh, in the Urban Plaza that night. Um, you know, you, you gotta imagine this happening. People running. Ah! all that good stuff so few few more headlines um jay-z's net worth is now at 2.2.5 2.5 billion dollars according to forbes mm-hmm. yeah yeah they gave that man they they said yeah yeah so <laughs> yes yeah he ain't playing with y'all. He said he gonna keep getting his money until he can't get it no more. All right, so let's get into the story real quick. I got time to read it. He gonna keep getting his money until he can't get it no more, suckers. Um, so all right, I was in the right place. So Jay Z is still very much a businessman, according to the Forbes. Um, you know they did they go they come up with they tell everybody's business. Every year, um, the Rock Nation rapper is now worth a jaw-dropping 2.5 billion dollars following the sale of his alcohol brand. See, because it's business, man. It's not just music; it's business. Um, the updated ranking came on Friday, makes Hove the 1,000. And two hundred and third, well, two went one thousand two hundred and third richest person in the world. Dang, is that many rich people in the world? Wow. Um, back in February, Jay Z sold fifty percent of his stake. Um, well, his fifty percent stake in his Duce Cognac back to the parent company Bacardi. Um, for a reported seven hundred fifty million dollars after a tense court battle and still retains sizable ownership in the brand. So that's what happened. Mm-hmm. That's how he got to them, to them extra billions. Um, Bernard, I'm going to say this wrong, Arnold, um, CEO of LVMH, Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton is still the richest person in the world, which, duh, um, look! Look! What, look at all the things that he has, and that LVMH. They have a lot of other brands that you guys don't know about underneath of them. Like, um, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Um, Gucci. Gucci is underneath of them, and I only know this because I had this weird, you know, like you know when they drop movies and stuff. Sometimes, like with that Gucci movie, they dropped. They dropped it. I did see that movie, but I don't. I like to do the research behind stuff a lot. And so I, I I knew about the Gucci situation. I'm not going to say the word, the N word, but the pow pow. And so I wanted more information about it. And there's a whole full documentary about that. And then how they trans- transitioned under um, LVMH. It's another company. Oh, there's a couple of them. But yeah, they, they are, like I said, Louis Vuitton. But it's not just Louis Vuitton. It's Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and somebody else. Um, but he is still the richest person in the world with a net worth of $216.1 billion dollars. Damn, he rich. Um, but bragging rights for the most um paid rapper currently belongs to Jay Z. Um, not only that, Billboard recently named him the best rapper of all time. I got y'all got to stop listening to Billboard. Billboard going to get people in trouble. I'm trying to tell you. And he holds the most Grammys. I mean, I ain't saying that Jay Z. Mm, I I'm not going to say he's the best rapper of all time, but I'm gonna just say. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm gonna say about Jay Z, but because I'm not never gonna say he the best rapper of all time. There's great rappers out here better than him, but I will say he about his business. He handles business, so I'm gonna say that. Um, and he holds the most Grammys for a rapper with 24 Grammys, which is incredible, um, incredible. Now I told y'all this a couple of podcasts back that um, Little Wayne recently disputed Jay Z's title with open regard and gain and gain support from respected personality Angie Martinez. But given the stack of Hov's number ones that could might have highly um contested the debate. Listen. I, I'm not even giving Lil Wayne that, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, and that's my birthday twin. You would think I would. That's my birthday twin, but I'm not even giving him that credit. I don't know. 
if I have um okay, so we good with this. I don't know if I have I don't know who I would put in that category right now. Um, but I'm definitely not putting Jay Z in there. I love Jay-Z, though. He's an amazing, amazing, talented artist. I don't want you to ever get a Swiss set. I'm a big Jay-Z fan. I'm a... Nigga, hold on. Let me just make sure we're clear about what I'm saying here. I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. I love Jay-Z. I just... I'm a hip-hop critic, though. You know what I'm saying? And there's a couple of other Jay-Z albums up here. Reasonable Doubt is up there. Uh, What's this right here? I don't even know what this is. I got on my wall the black album. Um, and I haven't even finished doing my CD wall. But so don't ever get it twisted. Don't ever think that I don't like Jay Z. I do. I love Jay Z. But, you know, I love him as a rapper. But I'm just not sold on uh, the best rapper of all times. Now, if, now, I don't even know if I'm saying that. If I was going to say maybe if we talk about alive, but I don't even know if I'm saying that for that either. I just, I don't know. I gotta think about it. I gotta think longer hard about it. So let me get rid of this mouse because I don't need it anymore. And let's get to some love. So again, even though y'all didn't do what I told y'all to do, it's very instruction is very important. Um, shout out to anybody who's watching from YouTube. Shout out to anybody who's watching from Twitch or from Facebook. Okay. Now these people I'm about to show love to though. <laughs> They're my other babies. I love them so much. They're so wonderful to me. Hold on. I got to get the right list, baby. Hold on. Let me see. I do it this way. Um, But they, they are my babies. So I got to show them love the way I show them love because they're extraordinary. But this is not the right list either. This is a whole nother list. Oh, I forgot. I went on a tangent. Um, so I'm going to show them love the way I need to show them love. Let me get rid of this real quick so I can get to the right list. And then, um, I don't want to miss anybody. That's why I'm trying to make sure I had the right list up. Hold on. I know where I could go. Um, cause I gotta show my baby some love. Here we go. Right here, I believe. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Here we go. Right here, babes. I had to get that up on my screen really quick. So I'm going to show some love to my peoples because I love them and they love me and they come back and they download and they keep showing love. First, my top six, I always show them love first because they show me the most love. So my top six is the United States of America, um, France, Germany, India, um, the UK, and Belgium, specifically Brussels. I love you guys. Thank you for always holding the girl down and loving on me and stuff. And I, I love you guys too. Now, don't ever get it twisted. I love them very much, but I love you all equally. I forget it. I just shout them out first because they show me the most love. Um, So I'm going to continue to show love. And um, Drake, stop playing with these people I'm about to talk about right now. Stop playing with them. Brazil, I love you. Uh-huh. Netherlands, I love you. Singapore, I love you, babies. South Africa, I love you. Um, United Kingdom, I love you. I already said the United Kingdom. They in my top six. Spain, I love you. Philippines, Belgium, I already told y'all already. Australia, Japan, Mexico, Ireland, Nepal, Mauritius, Israel, Canada, Hong Kong. Wait, I'm not done. I ain't done. I'm, I'm not going to be done for a minute, so just bear with me. Um, <laughs> Russia, China, um, I said Netherlands already, Poland, Tunisia, Venezuela, baby. Um, see what we got over here. I don't want to miss, miss anybody. Indonesia, um, Switzerland, uh, Turkey, Austria, Austria, not Australia, Austria, um, Kenya, Pakistan, and Romania. I'm not finished. <laughs> I know y'all want me to do. I'm not done. I got. Oh, I think the last the last country is um, Nigeria. Um, so thank you all. And it's a lot of cities that I could go and name. I don't want to do them though. I guess I could do a quick couple of cities real quick. I try to stay away from the cities at this point because as the list gets longer, um, 
the more I have to say. And it's just like, ah, I want to shout out some cities, but I'll give a couple of cities. Let's see what we got on the list. See, you know, um, the UK, um, Marlo, I love you. Whoever listens in, in, in Marlo, I love you. Thank you. Um, Nigeria, Lagos. Um, nope. India, you know, I don't do no butchering of the cities, but, you know, I love you. Nope, Germany, I don't do no butchering of the cities, but I love you. Um, Canada, Barry and Greater Sudbury. Big shout out to y'all. Um, United States, I'm just giving out a few cities. Not These are not all of them. Um, Ashburn, Boardman, Ashburn, Virginia, Boardman, Oregon, Austin, Texas, Clarksville, and many in Minneapolis. I can't ever get that out. Big shout out to y'all. And uh, Austin, Texas, that's family. I feel like that's family. Big shout out to my peoples in Austin, Texas. And like I said, in Belgium, Brussels, I got big love for Brussels. They've been here for a while. They've been showing me love for a while. And so I got big love for Brussels. But anyway, so those are all my peoples. I love you. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. You guys are super freaking amazing. And I do this because you guys keep coming back and listening to this podcast. And I appreciate you so much, babies. I do. Just a few things I got to say before I get out of here, though. First things first. I want to do... Um, So, I'm looking for the right person to come on my show, but come on my show to interview me. So if you're interested, hit me up. Um, I want you. I want somebody to turn the tables on me. I've interviewed people, but I want somebody to turn the tables on me and ask me questions that they, you know, want to know. So if you would like to come do that, or if you would like advertisement, or if you would like to come on the show for your own benefit to promote whatever you got going on, or if you just have a suggestion, hit us up, baby. Hit us up. Ambitiously the podcast at gmail.com. Hit us up. I got you. I got you. Oh, I think that was my sister. That's my sister. Today. Um, so anyway, remember you can always join the conversation. Um, call in, text, drop a comment, or you can ask me to drop the link, and I will. Um, 443-850-4828-440-443-850-4828. Um, yeah, do that. Do that. Do that. Um, and when I do play music, um, know that I have permission to play. I wouldn't play anybody's music without their permission, so just know that I have permission to play it. Um, oh, yeah, that's why she had to work today. Um, like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. This is very important. You know, it helps us grow as a podcast. We're trying to get into some new things. It's just a process. So remember to like, share, and subscribe. I will keep you posted on other other things that's going on. Um, w- check out our website, www.ambitiouslyentertainment.com. Again, www.ambitiouslyentertainment.com. Um, Updates are on that website as well. There's some things we got to change on there too because one of our partners um, is no longer a partner anymore, but I got y'all. Um, donate to the show, dollar sign, capital L-U-R-L-U-C-I-D-I-T-Y. Again, if you would like to donate to the show, it's on the screen below, but dollar sign, capital L-U-R-L-U-C-I-D-I-T-Y, Lower Lucidity. To lure them in clearly. That's what that means, honey. Um, if anybody ever wanted to know what that meant, that's what it means. Um, lure, you know, lure them in. Oh, lure, lure them in. Lucidity, lucid, clearly. Lure them in clearly, that's what it means. Um, and if you want to go check out any other of the podcasts, other streams that we've done in the past, know that we're on all streaming sites. You Go check out any of them. They're all, they're all there. None of them none of them are uh, gone. They're still there. Um, so go check them out. Uh, so yeah, Drake stopped playing with my peoples in Brazil. They said they paid for their tickets, and you were supposed to get them a shout. Um, Takashi, stay out of LA Fitness. That's not the place for you, bro. All that money you be taping on your body and stacks, you should be able to put a gym in your house and get a personal trainer. Because it's not looking good for you out here in the streets. And and if anybody's seen the pictures of what they did to you, oh my goodness. Um, 
<laughs> what else we talk about? Kanye, welcome back, baby. At least you understand now that everybody's not at fault for what the execs did to you. And then the problem is, is you know what I really had a problem with with that whole situation? It, my problem is not that he's anti-Semitic. You feel me? I, everybody has their um, right to be who they're going to be and feel how they're going to feel. And you know what I mean? Like express what they want to express. I say things a lot that people were like, Ugh. you know what I mean? Like, like even when I when it came down to the Adidas and Balenciaga dropping him on a business standpoint, one of the things that people got upset with me about for saying is this, when it comes to the corporate world, when it comes to business, you cannot tell, and especially you as an individual, cannot tell a, a corporation or a business how to run their business or who to associate with or you know, the things that they're supposed to, like, they they got to rock with Kanye because it's Kanye. No, this is my business. That's like nobody else is coming in and, and going to mistreat ambitiously entertainment. No, you don't get to tell me what it is that I feel best, what is best for my business. That was the only point I was making, but that made a lot, pissed a lot of people off. So, <laughs> but welcome back, Kanye. And I'm glad Jonah could play a part in that. And then a lot of people got mad when I'm telling them I'm Jewish, but whatever. Um, But welcome back, Kanye. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you, Jonah, for helping him back because he realized, you know, and some things... The thing that I, I notice about Kanye, he'll say things, but he'll say things. He'll say what's in his heart, like how because he he's angry at the time, so he'll just blurt out things. He doesn't sit, and I said this before. He sometimes he'll have a very in intelligent thought in his head, but sometimes he just doesn't sit and think about what it is that he wants to say before he says it. I guess. I think I said that before. Like you know, he'll just say it. He's one of those one of those people that just say whatever come to mind at the moment and does not sit on the thought of what it is that he's trying to convey. And that is why people be getting angry because they're not understanding what it is that he's trying to say. Um, same thing when you know he was in that whole "Make America Great Again" situation and all of that good stuff. So that's a, a whole nother situation. And tax stone. I'm sorry, bro, but you in there and you on camera doing it, so it's what it is. Um, Troy Ave, baby. All right, he's in there now. Now go make some regular music. Start with the disc. We don't need three disc tracks about why you feel vindicated about that man being in prison. We understand. We all, most of us, for the most part, saw the footage. Now go make an album. And, um... I forgot what the other dude's name, but I kind of agree with him on the sample thing. I need you to make it, make me guess where that sample came from. I didn't, I shouldn't just know where the sample came from. So I guess I kind of agree with him. And then um, Jay-Z, congratulations. I mean, you were already in the billion, billion, billionaire boys club, but now you're really in the billionaire boys club. So um, congrats. And so I guess I got everything that I talked about out of the way few things I got to say before I get up out of here. Yeah. Mm, girl did good. Girl did good. Ew. Um, so anyway, first things first, let's get this out the way. Got some things I got to get off my chest real quick. Hold on. <sighs> Mind your business. Everybody's business is not your business, right? It's the difference between minding your business and staying in your lane. I explain that when I get to the lane part. But mind your business. If you would like to know other people's business, the safest thing you could do is just come here and I'll tell you everybody's business because that's what I do every Monday and some Wired Wednesdays too. I do that too some, sometimes on Wired Wednesdays. Um, but come here and I'll tell you everybody's business. But mind your business. It's a dangerous world out here. And people out here doing stuff to people for being just nosy. Just oh, mind your business. Secondly, love your babies, hug your babies, encourage your babies, tell your babies they're the greatest of all time. I, they need that encouragement. It's, I, man, I encourage like 15 kids every morning, and those are not my babies. I only have one. But I bring them all in. They're my babies for that morning, and I tell them how great they are, and I tell them to do their best, and they love it, and that's why they join the little mommy speech. Um, 
But the thing is, encourage your babies. All they need is a little love and encouragement. And that means the most to them. So just do that. If they want to work for NASA, tell them to be the best pit, um, um, engineer, astronaut, receptionist, janitor, secretary, whatever else they do over there at NASA. If they want to work for NASCAR, tell them to be the best, best, best pit boss. NASCAR driver, commentator, or whatever the hell else they do over. I'm quite sure they got janitors over there at um, NASCAR as well. But I don't know, because I've never worked for neither company. But the point is, encourage them to be great. And if those are the jobs that they choose, encourage them to do their best at those jobs. That's that. Last but not least, stay in your fucking lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Could you jump in my lane? <laughs> Unless there's people trying to stop her from coming out, because people do try to stop that. I, I do recognize that. Be like, no, no, no. But I recommend, I recommend you don't do, you don't stop that. You let it happen. Let it happen. Trust the process. Um, but you don't want her. She's, you don't want her at all. You want her. <laughs> She's nice, sweet, and cuddly. She's so sweet. Why would you want the other one when you can't have her, or at least her, honey? I'm happy when I am purring. I'm a very happy kitty when I'm purring. I'm trying to tell you, I need to purr. I do. I need a good purr. But anyway, the point is, stay in your lane, because what happens when you jump into other people's lanes, usually, is a collision. And nobody needs that. Who needs a collision? Nobody. So just stay in your lane. Now, I told you I would tell you the difference. I told you, being um, minding people's business is being nosy. St- jumping in people's lanes is inserting yourself into a situation where you should not insert yourself. Stay in your lane. It's that simple. Stay in your fucking lane. Anyway, with that being said, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. If you watched it, thank you in advance for those who are listening to this podcast. Because, man, we made it to 7,000. I appreciate it. Um, and we're still growing. So thank you to those who come through and support the podcast. I love you so much. And man, I adore y'all. And just thank you. Oh, you make me feel good inside. And with that being said, mama got to get up out of here. We made it to 7,000, y'all. <laughs> we're on our way. We keep, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. But anyway, I got to get out of here. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. Bye.